In this tutorial in PhotoDirector 365, we'd like to give you some tips on using the Dispersion tool, which is found in the Animated section under the Guided button. We have an image loaded, and now we've gone to the Guided button at the top. We're going to click on Animation Effects, the third grouping from the top, and choose the second one down called Dispersion. What dispersion will do is it will create particles that fly out from certain pixels on your picture. To select those particles, you need to use the brush tools in the panel on the left. And you take the brush, and you can control its size. And let's just paint a little area here uh, by the butterfly. So now we have this area set. So I click on the Apply button on the left side, and it will cause a dispersion to happen. These circular particles are moving because this is where the direction is on our direction control in the left panel. I'm going to move it straight to the top and you can see now it moves in this direction. There are several things you can do to change the dispersion besides the source. You can change the shape. You have 12 different shapes you can pick from. Let's switch it to a triangle. You can change the size, and as I increase it, now you actually see the triangles. The stretch is how far they go out. The density is how many. And the fade is the opacity. So these are things that you can change when it comes to these. Besides that, you have three types. The default is spread. You also have straight. And then you have another one called shrink. I think most often I will be using the spread option. Now, if you want to do this and create a different area that you want this to come from, you click on the Modify Region button in the bottom. It takes you back to your area that you mask with your brush. You can either click the minus or hold the Alt key down to erase it. And you can create a different area that you want the particles to emerge from. Then click on Apply. And now we have a different look and feel. Let me show you something else you can do. I'm going to click on Clear. And I'm going to mark here several different areas in the picture, kind of at random. And then click Apply. And now you notice each of them works in relationship to my screen. I'm going to turn the, the, the direction up. And we see this happening in, in this way. Now, this is working with a still picture, with a still image. Now, you can also animate this. You can save the results either as a photograph with these kinds of effects on it or as a small movie. Let's turn on Enable Animation. When you do that, you see the particles moving. And I can choose a speed, slower or faster. And then I can also add background music, which you hear already. I can turn that on or off, and I can click the play button at the bottom to see the animation and hear no music. When I have music playing, I can select the music. I click on the, the button with the three dots. That will open up a, a new window where I can choose the kind of music I want. I can choose anything from a default collection I have here to some audio beat effects. You can even import your own music. So let's change to one of these. Let's go to this one here. And you see below the preview screen, you also can control whether you fade it in or out or not. I'll turn those off. You can control the in mark and the out mark to set the duration of the music. You can reset everything if you want to. You also have a beat effect that you can add. So we'll play this and you're going to see a beat effect related to hue value and glitch value and also saturation value. Listen and watch. Now if you want one of the three effects, not the other ones, what you do is you take the values that you don't want to apply and you turn them down to zero. Let's take this one and see if we can get this close to zero. And now all we'll have is the hue impacted on the beat. Let's play this. So that's how you can change one, two, or three of these beat effects, or you can completely turn them off. 
When you're satisfied with what you've done, you click on OK and you're back to your main screen. Again, you can turn the background music on or off as you prefer. When you're done with the effects that you want to use and you want to save the file, you click on Save As. If you want to save it only as a photo, you click on New Photo File and it will give you several options. Or if you want to save it as a video, you can click on the second option there. And here you choose the location and the name of the file. I'll just call this Test. And you can save it in three formats, an MPEG-4, a WMV, or a GIF. You can choose the aspect ratio. You can choose your profile that you want to use. And you can actually modify the duration here by using the slider. And when you're done, you simply click Produce. We'll cancel out of that for now. The one thing you can't do is you can't mark several different spots and have them move in different directions. But if you're going to work with a photograph, you can create one layer like this and save it as a file. And then you can reload it and use the dispersion tool again with maybe a different shape for dispersion, a different location for dispersion. And so you can layer the dispersion effects if you want by saving and layering over new and newer copies of your original. So this is an example of what you can do with dispersion. It, it can create a nice unique pattern on some of your photographs and you can even save it if you wish as a mini video.